What I'm hoping to show you is two things. One, how to run a video online conference with any student that you have in one type of your classes, but they're in many different hours in Schoology. The second is how to really quickly navigate uh, the big blue button in the Schoology conferencing app if you've already loaded it. All right, first, the first thing you're gonna need to do, I'm gonna move this down. First thing you're gonna need to do is you actually need to create a group. I didn't know this until another teacher helped me. So I'm going to call it trial run number two because I'm hoping there's something loaded here I can show you. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit my groups. And you can see that I've actually made it AP Chemistry online class. That was for all the students I have in AP Chem so they could come and join the online video conferencing. Okay, so you're going to hit create a group. After that, you can just title it. I'm going to just call it happy. Okay, and then you can put in a description. You can select a category. I don't know even know if you have to. I just hit general and I just moved on. So then I hit create. So we're going to call this group happy. Um, next is that you need to add members. So you're going to click here where you have your, you know, your own member. And then I'll delete this when this is done. So it's not going to be a real class or a group, I should say. You're going to hit add members. Now I'm not going to click this because there's going to be student names that are going to show up. So you click this button right here, okay? Then you go search for all the students that you have in that class. It is kind of a difficult thing to take some time. I decided to look for all my Hannahs, all my Zachs, all my common names that I could go pick them all until I found all 52 advanced chem, or sorry, AP chem students. Next, once they're all in here, they do have to accept the invite. So you'll need to send out something where, you know, an update or an email that you let them know that they need to accept that invite to join this group. Okay, so let's say you have all your students in there. You've got everybody invited in, everybody's accepted, here we go. Next, you're gonna to have to have already installed this conference app. I'm not gonna do that in this video. I'm assuming the teachers that are using this have already done that. You'll hit create a new conference and then you can name it. I'm just gonna keep naming everything happy. Um, and then we'll say that's on the 30th at, um, you know, let's say 4 p.m. And then you can do an end time if you want. I'm just gonna hit create because I'm just trying to make this as quick as possible. I'm going to start this conference now, even though it's not now, um, just to kind of show you what it looks like when you go into the big blue button. This will allow those students to join. So I'm going to hit microphone. That's going to happen every time. It might even have this echo test. Just move on. It's going to be every time you do that. The other thing is this shows up every time, which I thought was kind of annoying, but as soon as you might boost, you know, put some chats in there, you know, this might slide out of the way. Um, next, you do have some shared notes, which I'm not sure how helpful these would be, but maybe they will be. You can run polls. Um, I don't know again, maybe unless you're doing a bell ringer or maybe some kind of quick little, you know, you know, walk into class and answer a couple questions kind of thing. You can also do upload a presentation or share an external video, but I found absolutely no use for those, to be honest with you. Okay, next. Over here, um, I have really found no use for these except for maybe to try to draw on your screen, but for me, AP Chem, this is not feasible. Um, so you can go to the next slide, which is just a blank slide. You know, there you can draw all over it. You can put a text box and, you know, type some stuff, but I honestly have not really found a great use for, um, you know, anything that really is in here as much as, as you know, people have thought there was. The big thing in here to me is being able to share your screen. So here, now don't freak out. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit, um, you know, start record. And then yes, over here, you can see that it's recording. I'm just gonna move this a little bit off the side, maybe even up to this side, just to get you out of the way of seeing everything. When you hit share screen, it's gonna have this crazy, like zoomed in, like, you know, duplicate version of yourself uh, way too many times that freaks you right out. What I have found is that's just, that's just, just that's what it is, so move on, and then just show your screen. So here's where, again, you can show maybe a daily plan. For me, I wanna go into the AP Classroom, work some problems, et cetera, okay? Then down here, you can just hit stop sharing, because I wanna keep this as short and sweet to the point. Go back to that group. Um, I'm just gonna put this down, I think, on the corner. You can, you know, make this, you know, this screen bigger. Again, I'm not sure how many helpful things that really is gonna be used for. Um, maybe other teachers will find better uses for it. You can pause your recording and then you can always come back to it, etc. and it'll add in. Um, last but not least, I need to get rid of this um, pointer thingy here. So I am just going to, um, leave, I'm gonna leave that the way it is. Okay, next. This is what I really came in here to use as an AP Chem teacher. I really wanted these breakout rooms. So let me slide myself over again. So you can hit create breakout room. 
You can choose, I'm always in the way here, you can choose the number of breakout rooms depending on the number of students that you have. Um, because I don't have anybody in here, it's kind of being picky. You can change the time. You can randomly assign them. You can even allow to, you know, users to join their own breakout room. Maybe you say, hey, you have to be only four or five in a breakout room. I've actually found eight's a good number for a breakout room. You'll hit create, and then um, you can go join any of those rooms. I don't know why this is fighting me, so I'm just going to join room one. And then the w thing that I thought was weird is you're going to still hit microphone. You're going to still have to echo test. I do not know if at this point you're, you have to say to one student that you're in charge or how they're going to share screens until tomorrow, which I'm trying it out right away with them. Okay, so then what I thought was also weird is you can't really see um, how to leave. So I just clicked out and I went back um, to the main room. Um, and then you can always go back, um, you know, and invite more people in or go back to those breakout rooms once you have students. So I'm just going to hit close. Here's where you can go breakout rooms. You can join either room. You can end them all at the same time. Okay. All right. So I'm going to try to go through and then um, close this so that you can see where it would go to be saved. Um, but it does take some time to save it. Remember, you have the chat. I'm trying to think if I caught everything here. You've got those things down there. Um, and remember again that they, um, you know, when you share your screen, it's just going to have the, all those images. Just get over it and move on to um, to showing what you want to show your students. Okay, in terms of what document you're trying to go to. So again, that's going to show a lot of uh, zoomed in versions of yourself. I haven't really found like application window or Chrome tab. I guess if you go Chrome tab, it's a little bit nicer because maybe you say I only want to show. Um, this digital learning document, you'll actually see that up in the corner there's a little blue thing. And then the only thing the students are seeing is just this one document. They're not seeing all your tabs at the top. That's the only benefit of that. Plus you kind of got a little, you know, a little you know, evidence that you're doing this right here. Okay. Okay, I'm trying to keep this short. So let me go back to here and then what I'm gonna do is end it. I think when you end it, you just you just close it and it's done. And then what's going to happen is it's going to seem like we don't have anything there. So you have to end recording or end conference. It does show up in the completed, and this is what made me worried, was like they never showed up with any recordings, but I guess I wasn't patient. You need to wait for a while for the recordings to show up. And I'm assuming the longer the recordings, the longer you're going to have to wait. So let me see if I can go back to one that I kind of made with my little trial run and see if it showed up, showed up yet. Um because I made this before I made this video. And then there it is. Okay, so here's my recording. It's only available for seven days. You know, you can hit play. And so this is the recording I made um, as another trial run before this trial run. Um, and then this is what you can have your students play. And all I was doing here again was kind of showing how to use um, different things in the big blue button. And I was just kind of zooming around and um, showing you different things in there, okay? So there you can actually see right there, I was making a recording before this recording in China showing all the things I'm trying to show you right here. Okay, so it is possible, just be patient and wait for it to be there. Okay, I hope this was as short as I could get, but I know for me, I need to see what to click, how to do this with actual live people talking me through it. So I hope this pays it forward to any teacher who needs help using this online conferencing tool in Schoology. All right, good luck teachers, we can do it.